Well, hello and welcome back to the Solar Professor video series. I'm Steve Geiger, your Solar Professor. And I got really excited about um, the NABCEP videos that I have been putting together and I have completed for you the uh, four things that you must know for the NABCEP exam. And there's one other that I think that is uh, pretty important for us to take a look at. So I'm doing this bonus video for you guys in regards to it. So without further ado, let's take a look at what it is. There we go. There we go. Um, the bonus is grounding so that we understand how system grounding works and uh, the difference in a couple of terms that I'm going to point out for you in, in just a second. And I do actually have uh, a couple of sample problems for it uh, as well. So let's take a look here. Um, basic understanding of grounding and PV applications. Grounding is extremely important for PV. It's for our safety. Um, it also helps for, with the uh, safety of the equipment as well. And um, it can, if there is a, a lightning strike or a surge or something like that, uh, it can help with situations of that nature and send any particular ground faults or things like that to the earth. And that's, you know, that's what we want to do. So grounding is, is very critical. And in the National Electric Code, um, there's a lot of information specifically about how we are properly grounding systems. And so I've got a couple of things for us to look at today in regards to grounding. Um, and then, of course, as I mentioned, the sample NAPSET problem. So let's go ahead and continue here. All right, what I have right here is a diagram. All right, in my class, I usually actually draw this out by hand, but I didn't want to take all that time on the video for us today. Um, so I'm going to point out a couple of important things. This is not the only diagram I have either. Okay, and uh, as I mentioned in my other videos, this uh, PowerPoint uh, slide set is available on my website solarprofessor.info in the instruction section and uh, it's there as a PDF that, that way you guys you know I know a lot of this stuff is, is small uh, when I'm doing it here on the video but you can see it uh, clearer and larger if you just uh, download the PDF alright so in this particular case we're showing a number of uh, components and we're seeing the DC side of the system and of course we have positive and negative on the DC side, that's important for us to know. And we're also seeing the green here and it is showing us uh, grounding situations. In this particular case we're seeing that they, they're using a grounding electrode. Grounding electrode is basically, uh, it can be a number of things. It can be a UFER, it can be uh, connected to a water pipe, it, uh, a ground can be connected to, to rebar. It really depends on uh, different building codes in different areas of the country what's going to be allowed. Um, out here in California, oftentimes what we're doing is we're pounding a ground rod if necessary. The ground rod is eight feet long. It's usually five eighths inch thick and it's copper coated steel. Um, if it was solid copper, <laughs> it would bend over when it was trying to go into the ground. So it's got to be solid. Uh, and there's different ways that we can uh, pound that in the ground. Oftentimes we'll use a, a roto hammer to get it in there uh, and that's really the easiest way. Uh, over here, so we've got a couple of other things to note here. You can see uh, red here happens to be positive and black is negative. Uh, then we move over here to the, this is the inverter, okay? Um, and if we have an inverter here, oftentimes we'll see it on diagrams or um, drawings and such with uh, its symbols okay and so this right here is the symbol and you'll see it on um, multimeters too this particular symbol here it's a line with some dashed lines above it and that is the let me make it darker here so you can see it so basically like that and then you have this right here and that is the sine wave and that's for the AC side of the system so over here is DC right and then over here on this side is AC um, H stands for hot, so those are the hot wires, and then of course there's ground. The one thing that I don't like about these drawings is it's missing something, and it's missing the neutral. And the neutral is important for us to understand because it can be part of the um, grounded system. Okay, and I'll get to the terminology on the next slide. Um, but take a look at this. It's got a good layout. This image is from Home Power Magazine uh, with, in an article by 
uh, one of the fantastic folks in the industry. Um, his name is uh, John Wiles, and he, he does a lot of publishing, and he's actually contributed to the uh, NEC, the solar section in there, which is section uh, 690. And so, uh, really like information from him and articles from him and such. Uh, anyways, so this is some basics right here. We can see the um, grounding rods, the grounding electrode. That's an important word to realize. That is the, um, um, the ground rod that's being pounded into the ground. And then GEC is grounding electrode conductor. So that's basically the wire that comes from the equipment over here and gets connected to the grounding uh, electrode right there. So a few things to note on this particular slide. All right, let us continue on here. Next one is my definitions. All right, definitions are super important. If you're taking an APSEP exam, here's what I would do. I may go ahead and write these down if it's going to help you, okay? And what you need to know in particular is grounding versus ground dead. Okay, that's why I have them in different colors here. Grounding with ING right there versus grounded with the ED. Okay, very important. <clears throat> All right, here's the difference. Um, grounding is the equipment ground. It's basically the wire that goes through your entire system and touches all of the metal parts. Um, it will touch the uh, aluminum rails. It'll touch the um, edge of the module, the aluminum uh, edge of the module. Uh, it'll touch the um, uh, EMT, the electrical metallic tubing, uh, the, which is the conduit, right? If there's a raceway, it will touch the metal of the raceway. Any boxes, disconnects, the inverter box itself. Touches all that, and of course that is for safety. If there is a ground fault, meaning a hot wire crosses somehow, or a positive wire, or what ha whatever, um, touches ground or, or gets cut and, and um, grounds out, okay, which sends a, a fault, that um, energy will be dissipated to the earth. That is what the grounding uh, system is for, okay, that's what uh, grounding does in the equipment. It touches everything, makes sure that it's going to be safe when we're actually touching metal parts uh, and housings and, and such like that because if there's a fault it's going to send it to earth. Very important. Now, um, on the DC side, I've distinguished between DC and AC here uh, for your convenience. Right? DC is the green or bare copper conductor and you guys have seen that in, uh, in systems if you've installed them or seen um, uh, in books, you know, uh, wiring diagrams and such. In fact, the next diagram that I'm going to show you on the next slide, um, you know, I, I like how it's using the, uh, the colors of the wires on, on that. And we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, subsequently, when we're working with the equipment grounding situation here, um, AC is the same thing. It's green or it's bare copper. Sometimes in, in uh, older equipment, eh, maybe some newer equipment, you'll see it you know, green with a yellow stripe. That, that's acceptable as well. Um, and then we know that is all uh, for grounding. Okay? Grounded is different. And we need to understand the difference here. And that's why I've highlighted it here in our definition section. All right? Grounded is the system ground. Okay? And what the system ground is, Typically, on the DC side, it's the black or it's the negative conductor on most systems. There was some equipment in the industry for a number of years that had um, a positive system ground. Yes, it was really confusing, um, but now everything that I've seen as of lately is uh, the black or the negative is really the ground dead conductor. Okay? So they would call it the ground dead conductor. Um, AC side of the system, your ground dead conductor is the white one, um, and that is also called the neutral, okay, for those of you who know um, alternating current. Um, it's, and the way it works is it's bonded to the grounding conductor only at the main service panel. Sometimes, I, and I've done a, a, a number of projects out there where I'm going into sub panels and I'm like, why are they, uh, grounding, okay, the grounded conductor 
landing it to the um, grounding, this, this, the, the, the equipment grounding bus bar in, in, in the um, sub panel. It can create potential for currents not to flow properly. And so always in residential systems and even in commercial systems, really what we should be doing is making sure that that bond is only happening in the main service panel. That's, that's very important. In one place, basically. In one place. And that's the, that's the main service panel. Okay. So, grounding versus grounded. Important to know. Alright. A couple uh, more diagrams to look at here, and then we got a couple of sample problems for you. Okay. So, these pictures are from the um, Jim Dunlop book, uh, Photovoltaic Systems. Love that book. Again, uh, really, I call it the Solar Bible. Everything that you need to know for the NABCEP exam. Uh, most of the questions are derived from, from that very book. Okay, um, check it out over here. We have this first diagram, and it's showing a number of separate grounding electrodes. My suggestion is to talk to your AHJ, which stands for Authority Having Jurisdiction, and it's the city or the county or whoever, um, to find out what the inspector is going to be looking for on the job. So that if you need to pound a separate grounding rod, you can go ahead and do it um, upon the installation, and then you won't have to have the inspector come out a second time. Sometimes there's charges if they fail you and they come out a second time because you don't have the, the proper grounding rod that, that they're looking for. Okay. Um, so, sometimes there's good, I, I usually don't see three grounding rods uh, anymore. And this is a little bit of an older uh, picture. Most likely we're seeing one grounding rod, especially if the array is on the roof uh, and there's an existing original grounding rod, that's all we, we, we usually need on the system. But again, we're checking local uh, building codes and such. Um, looking at these pictures, let's, let's focus on this one right here. Um, we're seeing the array here and we're seeing the color wires coming through. And what I'd like to note on this particular uh, drawing here is it says DC grounded conductor, okay? This happens to be um, the negative right there. So this wire is white or gray right there and it happens to be negative. In this particular uh, uh, wiring diagram, the black one is positive. On the other one, um, it was red and then the uh, negative was black, okay? A lot of the newer inverters I've noticed go with the red and black. Uh, some of the uh, older equipment uh, and such in the industry uses the black and the white, so that's important to note and that's why I'm pointing it out to you right here. Notice what they call it. The grounded conductor here and then the ungrounded conductor. Anytime it is the ungrounded conductor, typically it's going to be the uh, positive on the DC side. Here's the inverter again, same thing. Okay, Over here we have the AC uh, grounded conductor as we mentioned in, in our uh, definitions. That's of course the white and then the AC ungrounded conductor and you remember what that's called, right? That's the hot. Okay, So those are, those, so those are the hot wires coming uh, on through. Um, and oftentimes what we're going to be seeing is a 240 volt system so we would see one black ungrounded AC conductor and one red ungrounded AC conductor. This is really how, how the diagram should look right there. Okay. Over here you can see what's happening here. The, um, they call it a bonding conductor. It's the grounding conductor. Equipment grounding conductor. It's green. It's touching everything that it needs to here. Notice the grounded conductor here is uh, on this DC side. And, and this oftentimes happens in the inverter, and it really it's older inverters that this picture is derived from. Uh, inside the inverter there is a bond in the actual inverter between the um, uh, negative and then the, the uh, ground, the, the green ground wire. Over here we're seeing it bonded to all the housings and such, and then it goes right down using the uh, grounding electrode conductor to the grounding electrode right there in the ground. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell and I think that uh, covers it and hopefully I've done it in an understandable way 
uh, where you can visually see what's going on. It's great to look at some of these pictures and, and get it clear in your mind. It's great to see real systems and how it's actually done, uh, and that helps get it clear in your mind as well. Okay? All right. Let's take a look at a few more things, and then we'll be uh, wrapping up. Um, so here's a sample NABSEP question. What color is the positive conductor? Well, the answer is red. And it's red if the black, if the negative is black, and that's kind of like a, a car, right? Uh, red is positive in in a car system, and black is negative. And guess what? Black in a car system is touching what? It's touching the frame of the car, so that is a ground dead conductor. Okay, uh, part of the grounding uh, situation in the car, which is the frame. Okay. Uh, and if that helps for the comparison, then, then, then I think that, that's, that's good and I've done my job on that. Um, if it's like the picture that we just saw, um, black's positive, negative is white. Okay, Just keep that in mind. Uh, you could end up in a situation with either. Um, most newer inverter brands, uh, are, like I mentioned, are following the red is positive and then the black is negative color.